okay so now that you guys have seen that i'm not lying and i really did fail my master's degree i am saying this because i'm i should have gone to dress up i thought well you've not had your part why should you dress up so put on a wig and put lip gloss on so anyway um i'm saying this because if i had had a distinction or a pass or merit i would have come you know shower would say that oh my god i did this i did that and i just thought that you know what let me be honest you know let me be honest i mean i've been acting like a mental case all this while and i'm like just be honest let you really want people to understand what you went through right then tell them that this is what i went through this is why i faced so all the time i was dying my hair this issue started slowly but it didn't like aggravate to like i think when i dyed my hair blue like then was crazy but trust me this issue had been growing slowly so anyway let me start from the very very beginning like the very very beginning okay so before I, I i i resume you know recording this is going to be a very very long video as my friend has advised me to just make it you know just one video telling people this is what happened and just get past that point in my life so that i can just move on and not focus on my failures because then imagine if i have three videos focusing on my failures on my channel it would you know trigger me from time to time I, I just want to put this out there that i did not do this on purpose there is no point in doing it on purpose like there's zero reason to do this on purpose especially and look at it if i wanted to do it on purpose i wouldn't even be doing it this way but trust me i did not feel on purpose i'm just saying it because i feel like some people might feel like oh that's how it is no i did not do it on purpose i feel like i was just i feel like i was just stupid enough to fail like i don't want to i don't want to make myself feel like it's not okay to fail generally it's okay to fail if you don't fail how will you you know learn that kind of thing so but for me it was like a big thing i failed before but this was very big my a lot of my a lot like my a lot was hanging on in my future my progression my my plans were pla were relying on it. Do you get? I've had set plans or this that after passing one year, this is what I'm going to do. I said this is going to be a very long video, so be prepared. And also, I'm going to start from the very beginning, so you guys can understand every single thing that happened the past few weeks. Cause yo, it was mentally stressing. Okay, so now the problem was with my cast from the very beginning. I did not understand that you have to just because the school says one year doesn't mean your cast would date one year so my cast was dated um january january 11 to january 7 which has caught my stay by three days i think four days so that didn't just cut my stay by four days it also caused the cut um cut the extension i was supposed to get by two months so please 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 try to make sure your cast is round figured so if they say from the 12th of this month this year make sure it's the same thing the next year or the next two years depending on the year or duration of your course so for me it was like if i had noticed and i told them immediately they would have said okay then give me my four days back and then after giving my four days they send it to the home office and when they send it to the home office on 12 months you get two months extra I'll be on on less than 12 months but more than six months you get two months extra on 12 months you get four months extra so basically i couldn't get the four months i only got two months so that was the main issue but when i noticed because i asked people when is your visa expiring when is your visa expiring they said oh it's expiring me and mine is expiring much why i tried to call the school that oh please i need to extend this that's the beginning of my course please i need to extend it they said they cannot extend it because it's already been used and i should have known before and i'm like but i'm not the one that made the mistake it's not a matter of i should have known or i should have not known i'm like i don't even know what i didn't even know what cast or how this thing do, works till i came here like i don't even know things like this so i'm sorry if i skipped that and they were like they used to tell us they used to do this i'm like i'm sorry if i skipped that but when you know this thing happens a lot why don't you check the dates more like more often to make it accurate so that there's no issue in the future anyway when they said they cannot do anything i said okay fine and later on ending of last year my friend said that oh i should contact ukvi themselves to correct it for me when i now did it i said oh i'm sorry that oh i well, sorry that it is correct according to their records and i said okay no wala now 
that being said you do not want to like have this type of issue like seriously make sure your car state relates make sure your car state match so you have enough time to make up for anything that you might have issue with in school it's for me now eh, even let's say okay now they said my course ends january 11 i was still doing coursework till january 20 something so i do not understand when they know that the team will generate 20 something why do they not like just make the end it february or something i don't know how they do their things but for me now i feel the course here but before i failed that course during the in actually we have something we call ra that has reattempt on assessment reattempt we attempt an assessment that's what we call it but it has to do with extenuating circumstances so if you're if you fill the form that okay you have you want the ra you have to back it up with why you need a ra they won't just give it to you so with the ra if you fill your course they're going to give you an opportunity to redo it without capping and then with normal failing if you fail then you have to redo it but you can only get 50 that's all so with this course i knew that okay out of all my courses this is the course this is the baba of the course you just know you know how when you're a student you just know that this course can fuck me up this sorry for using the therefore but this course this is the trouble course so i knew that and this course this um this thing was due for january something and i felt like i wasn't in a good space mentally so i extended that's just asking for extension that's the five days extra extension so i asked for that and when i did that i feel like when i did that by the time i submitted i submitted the night the midnight before um the this thing the the deadline so when i submitted as i was submitting i knew that this work i'm not very sure of it i'm not very sure i'm not i know in my heart over that i'm not sure of it so i just submitted a ra and then i assumed okay by the time i do the ra and then they give me time to like redo reassess do all those things it will happen before my visa expires that was where i fucked up honest i procrastinated on my assessment because this assessment they give you from the beginning of the semester and i procrastinated to like okay let me do it three weeks to the deadline or let me start three weeks to the deadline but the problem now is that by that time I was already going through some mental like you know my head was here it was there it was nowhere and somewhere at the same time so it was like if i had not procrastinated if i had started when i was supposed to start or even like two months ahead i would have gotten far ahead in my assessments worked well enough to not even need a rat to back up to back to to rely on to give me the opportunity to redo my assessment so knowing this i feel like one thing this whole experience of me was that procrastination like you cannot th teach a procrastinator to stop procrastinating you cannot just tell them stop you cannot just tell them it's bad for you any procrastinator you see that has changed trust me they had a life-changing experience that made them say no because since then yo i've been so like i've hardly the only thing i procrastinate about now is cleaning my room that's the only thing but i try my best not to in any other aspect of my life i really try my best not to that thing this whole experience taught me was checking your email you know how you wake up and first thing you check is instagram or whatsapp no it was my email first thing every morning it was always my email like the uh, why it's paining me now is that because once the situation was solved and i forgot to check my email one day and then there was something somebody has sent to me that i didn't see till friday i mean when was sharp in image but i just felt like if i was still if i still continued with my early morning email check i would have known that that thing had been sent to me so anyway that one so has taught me another lesson so i'm back on track with my daily check em of emails early in the morning to be honest they have had my share of raw submissions like i think that was my third ra i've been accepted twice and i've been rejected once yes so even that one self i could have appealed it but see my head was going gaga that i could not think about appealing. i just wanted to make sure that one didn't fail because the one that shouldn't fail is the main one that i knew that i fucked up in and then the other one i'm like you know what i know you i've done you as undergrad you, you're fine i forgot that it was the second semester and i didn't have enough time for reassessment 
win my visa so the problem was that i didn't know this at the beginning of you know knowing that i had failed because when my result came out late january i feel like filled field i got zero at first i thought it was like a mistake maybe the, the lecture had not i'll be the module leader had not uploaded my results yet so when i saw zero i was like what happened so i went to her and i'm like hi um i couldn't see my result that is there something wrong blah 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 she said i should read the feedback and then i went to the feedback and i read it <clears throat> and when i read it i realized that she was she was not lying i was guilty of what she accused me of so i didn't say anything i knew that if i emailed her or told her oh that's a lie i did this to myself blah blah blah, blah. or if i'd emailed her trying to defend myself basically if i'd emailed her trying to defend myself she would have decided okay i'm sending this to the module and oh nah, i don't know how to say it course leader and then when she sends it to the course leader of course it's going to go to a panel i'll have to face a panel and when you face a panel once twice the third time you might be withdrawn from your course so i just said i did not even i just accepted to myself that okay you're guilty of what she accused you of but i didn't say anything i just got in contact with school because the student support advisor had already previously got in contact with me because of my ra excuse she had helped me like she had gotten in contact with me to tell me if i needed any support from the school they would be there and then she had also contacted me to tell me that um ah, that my ra needs evidence that that's why it is pending approval so i sent in the evidence and i told her that i failed the course and my visa date my visa date is march 7th and the submission the submission date was like i think may 19 i, I cannot do anything i don't know what to do i said okay that i should get in contact and book a meeting with the international experience team which i did and then the first meeting was like okay briefing i have to brief the person that this is what is happening and they said okay i'm going to book a longer meeting so the first meeting is like a 10 minute minute and the next one is 30 minutes so she booked the one of 30 minutes sorry i'm talking too fast so she booked the one of 30 minutes and then we started to discuss what was wrong in depthly so the problem i first of all had that my cast first of all had issues from the beginning that if i had my two months i'll be able to do my reassessment in the uk blah 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 blah, blah. she now said oh and i said i can the school offer me extension she said no that she can they cannot offer me the extension because it's reassessment and it's something i can do from home and that just made me go down like maybe i was 100 and then i just went down to 45 and then she's like i'm like wait why not but she said because it's reassessment it's not that i failed the course completely and in fact they cannot even say i failed the course till the board has met and finally decided that i truly failed the course so i'm like but I just like it's just it's, it's just failure like any anybody could have failed it's something that happens like it's not a crime because by the time she started talking she started saying that i cannot be an overstay if i be an overstay i just start that i should start booking my ticket home i said there has to be a solution i cannot be the first person in this situation she said well i'm not going to lie there have been other students in this position but they've had to go home because you cannot get a visa extension for your reassessment i said wow okay and then from 45 my mood just went down to like 10 i just my mental health just became so fragile that i was like i'm laughing now but i was not laughing because i was crying my voice was shaking and i was like wait somebody has to have gone there has to be something that could be done she said that you can be issued a cast but it is very unlikely it has not been done before that giving a cast to a student to complete the reassessment that it has not been done before i said well well it's not like i chose to fail I didn't feel i told the school my circumstances i've told them what happened i've given them proof of what happened and they said well that it's just she's just saying based on history that the school never gives reassessment for a extension for reassessment but if they give that she's going to brief me on the process of visa extension and then she started um saying visa extension on cast like if they give me a cast i said well she said i now told her that to be honest to be realistic of record what's the probability she said the probability is likely is very unlikely is next to zero that but if i'm able to get it well but i should be very realistic and i should not hope for it that the most realistic one that i can even get is extenuating circumstances abby um i don't know what they call it it's not extenuating some circumstances something something circumstances from the government on covid this thing and then that one is just going to be two weeks or three weeks they will give me they won't give me like the amount of time i need but she said that is my only option for now and i told her that okay with the cast what if i'm able to get it 
she said she is very unlikely and she's not going to put my hopes up or anything and then i said okay what if by the seventh they as they give me a car she said well they will do everything within 30 minutes they are done i said wait what if you can wait last minute why not do it now they said it's not a matter of waiting last minute it's a matter of we don't do it it is not accepted because there are rules ukvi has rules to issuing cars you can't just issue cars because you have the authority to issue cars and i'm like oh well okay fine how can i get my two months back the two months i'm supposed to get on my cars to do my reassessment she said well from the beginning i should have done that i said i did that i called the international experience team and they said the same thing and I just explained you get and then she was like oh that's seven and i said that was the moment i checked my calendar and my mental health just went to zero i just started crying at work and i checked and i realized that the second was um a few days to the top so the second the body would fought the results will come out and seventh my visa expires before i didn't know that it was like weekdays the weekend i didn't know that so looking at the calendar i saw that fourth is friday Fifth, sixth is weekend, then Monday. So I only have exactly one, one and a half working days to make whatever I was to work, work. So literally, I was basically calling school every day. So I said I'll call, and my voice would just start shaking. And I just knew somebody even already knew me. Is this this person? Don't worry, don't explain. I understand what's the update. <laughs> somebody already even knew me that ah, uh, like I I cannot even explain that. In fact, the moment like. So, okay, I got a book here with the student support advisor to talk face to face and I went and when I went, I explained to the person that is that I said, I was even looking at if I could do my reassessment fast, submit and then my results should come to the same time as the normal result. They said, no, they cannot do anything, but it will ask and he asked and he got back to me with a very, very long email, the kind of email that you assume that the rest is just rubbish or formalities or terms and conditions. And I read it and I felt, wait, what, what, like... I felt I wait I thought these people had an issue of what is wrong with me mentally like why would you send something like this to me it was a very passive aggressive email like it was passive aggressive I've already told her before if she does if she does this I told her ah, I said yeah like only me my head went I was screaming in my head not just because the news I got from the email but for the fact that I decided that there and there that I'm going to run for international student officer and no international student will have to go through this again. Like even like I'm going to run for it so much that then it's me that know what I want to do. But trust me, like there is one thing international students fear the most at Sheffield and, I, and it's not the school, it's not talking to student support or talking to the you know the white people there but it is talking to the international experience team like that's that's an international student fear the moment they say we're passing you on to the international experience team we shouldn't be scared we should even be more scared of talking to other people than talking to the international experience team it's like after that i told my ex my friends my experience and they shared their experiences they told me asked them did you complain did you do this they said you got did you complain i said i'm not complaining but i'm going to run for a position that will put me at the place to act to actually make changes it was it was traumatizing that email alone even if anything did not do anything that email alone was enough to make me do some things that will not make me sit down here today but i'm just grateful that i was my friends were calm collected and they helped me i wasn't eating i was just in bed every morning look at my email see one email from school and be like oh my god or see one email from somebody who said they will help me find information and be like ah oh god or just reach a dead end it was crazy for me they had already told me to buy a ticket they said buy a ticket just get ready to buy a ticket but i've been talking to my friends you know I've talking to my friends i've been talking to my friends and my family that i cried i had panic attacks we only call my sister telling her this and then she just said you know what it's okay people fail but i'm proud of you i really you've done so much i am so proud of you you've you've made me proud and i i'm not saying this because well, i'm saying this because i'm shocked it's actually coming from my sister this is my sister that i've i've, I've let me just say i'm disappointed because i'm the only one allowed to tell myself that i've done like that's one thing to spark me you never tell me you've disapp I've disappointed you or you're ashamed of me who are you who are you like that thing sparks like it pisses it gets me enraged when you say you're disappointed or embarrassed or ashamed of me like i'm sorry what are you doing what are you to me the only people allowed to say that are my sisters and my mom anybody else 
I swear to God, I'm just going to. If I cannot, if you are older than me, I'll just distance myself. But if we are age mates, or at least the gap is not that much, I'm we're going to go head to head. I really don't like it. So this is my sister that I've disappointed by being suspended in secondary school. She, we never agreed on anything, and she said, "I'm proud of you. It's okay if you feel that's fine. What do you want to do?" My other sister said, if you want to come home, she was sad. I could hear her voice shaking, but she didn't want to like, you know, she said, what do you want to do? Do you want to come home? If you want to come home, come home. I'm here for you. Whatever you want. I'm like, I'm sure. Because last year when I wanted to go, she told me that if you come home, there's nowhere for you to stay. She told me, she told me that. Well, now she's telling me, come home. Where is life? There is hope. I was like, I was shocked. And then I was talking to my friends and they were like, you can't go home. What do you want to go and do at home? You better do this. You better do that. I'll talk to another one. I'll go home. Because I me mean, too, so I was thinking, I was thinking, I considered being an university, but I was thinking to myself that I'm too young to ruin my immigration record. I'm too young. I have so much potential to be like, oh, let me be living under like it, it was a scary thing for me to consider things like this it was scary it was tormenting for me to, even in my dream the thing went down my dream there were times when i didn't want to wake up i would sleep till 11 still sleep again to make sure that i don't wake up to face what was wrong with me so it was a matter of my mental health was serious and four corners just me like my friends would try to reach out tell them i'm not at home i'll say something like even though that me, some of me and some of my friends were working at the same place and they could know that I had a shift or I didn't have a shift, I would not, they wouldn't, they wouldn't even be able to reach me. So when I got that email, I, I, I said to myself that I would do whatever it takes to stay in this country. I, w I cried though. So I cried and I said that I would do whatever it takes to stay in this country legally within my means, my means or I would do it. And then I said to myself that I would do, like I would do everything that would not make somebody say that if I go back to Nigeria, somebody would tell me that you should have done this you could have done this is a lie is this ah ah see i would have run mad i said that is that is the one thing i want to know that if anybody says anything i counter them with i did this i did it i did it i did, it, I did it. that's the main thing see this whole experience made me i'm, I'm a self-appointed immigration solicitor like see me re reading immigration laws see me trying to find a way for myself it was crazy. I, I started to, I started talking to people. I know they've been here longer. They've attended shoes. They know this. They know that. They got me talking to some people, and then I told them, "See, this was wrong with me." They said, "Go to school. Do they say this? When they say, when they did not say it, I mean, what, whatever they say, let me know. When they not say, do this." By the time I was ready, I now took, I now sat down, wrote an email, composed it, tag about four different people in that email. The next day, school opened the case. I think that was when my mood went back to 50% and I was able to, I went out because before then, I didn't want to restock my house. I said I wasn't going to buy food. I was eating conflicts every day. So I wasn't going to buy food that what if I'm leaving, that I don't want to waste anything, that I just want to give out what I can give out. So I did, I just stood up. I went to work. I picked the shift. I went to work, bought um, um, groceries, bought food and just kept it at home and cooked. And I just kept laughing to myself that so school could open a case before. Why didn't they open it at, from the very beginning when I had a, an issue like like when I presented them with an issue like this? I had to involve other people. I had to involve witnesses. And how they approached me after that, so beautiful. I said, hey, hey. like so you guys could, you guys could do this. Like it was not just being polite. It was so nice. It was so all we on the. I said, why? What was I doing wrong before by myself? so what i realized about this day was that it also pushes on the importance of communal relations because if not for the community the tiny community of friends the tiny community of nigerians the tiny community of other races that helped me of speaking to the right people do not close your mouth talk to the right people. you don't have to tell everybody but talk to the people that you know that they know that they know this they know what they're doing they know how they can help you and you know that there's going to be one suggestion or the other that's good i won't consider applying for post study regardless of having failed now let me see what they can do i would have lost them on their pounds trust me but I, that was that was my last option i called citizen help i tried to get um, this thing tier two there was tier two my friends would tell me it's three five is this thing go and ask them it's seven thousand once i ask them they ask me first they ask me when is your visa expiring i tell them they said ah it's twelve thousand cash down ha ha 
it's twelve thousand is easy like that and I've no I've no I've no I've no I've no I've not made something of myself in this UK. After the case was open, I started I picked shifts at work. I found a charity store that sold so many cheap stuff like how can you like there were so many cheap I bought my lamp, my bed lamp for one pound. Like it was so cheap and they were neat. I bought my bed table for two pounds. Like you would not know. This is the bed table they sell for 20 25 pounds. So I found that charity store and I was buying things there and it was cheap because I could buy things and know that I was saving money and it just uplifted my soul. And then my friend as well she'd pick shift with me to make sure that I wasn't just like it was it was a bonding experience. I swear it was crazy, but see I don't wish for my enemy. There are two things I don't wish for my enemy to experience losing their mom. I'm being in the situation I was in with my visa. Hi. Hmm. I don't actually believe that I'm somebody that is mentally strong, but passing that, I feel like I am mentally strong. I wished my friends away during this period. Before I dyed my hair blue that day, I don't know what happened. Okay, I fought with my friend the day before, and then I dyed my hair blue the second day, and that was after a very public meltdown. Like. A po like the meltdown that will make you feel like you're in no shoddy market. Tell me, say you must kill me, kill me. Ah, you know that kind of meltdown. That was what I had. I told somebody that you want to kill me, kill me. Oh, yeah, let's start. Let's start because it's like, do you know what? I was so selfish during this period because I told myself that, see, you have to be selfish. I did help people as I could during this period, but. I was the majority like my own concern was 90 percent any 10 percent i had i gave it to others but that 90 percent i prioritized my issue because i said to myself see if this thing goes wrong you're the only one that will suffer it if you decide to go to nigeria it's only you that will go on the plane if you decide to overstay it's only you that's going to overstay it's only you that's going to face the problems it's only you so if you know what's wrong with you put all your head in this thing ah hey Nobody had to do inspirational talk for me. I did it for myself. Before I had my hair blue, I think I was already considering even dropping my tenancy agreement, like telling my landlady that after this month I'm going to go. And my landlady is very quick like that. She'll just find tenant that will take over your room. So I was glad I didn't do that. My friend was just like, calm down, Denny. Wait first, wait first, wait first. Let's see what they can do. So me, oh, to me, oh, I would say that just this advice dropping in the middle of the old videos, that do a two-year course because one year is for your schoolwork and everything sorry one year is for your school schoolwork and everything and the second year is for your placement so during that placement year you'll be able to earn money as much as you can you can earn money if you get a good placement opportunity and the thing is that it is the same price if i knew that my 13k 905 was the same price for a two years course like it's not like what i didn't know i thought for a two years course you paid 19,905 twice but no for a two years course you're only paying it once so please it will give you more time to get opportunities if it's tier two or if it's this one it will give you more time trust me a year when she was saying a year is not long i do not believe a year is not long as i'm like i said god i told god, god if you give me this opportunity i know i said i'll take picture i'll do this i'll do that i'll do that i'm not going to make I will, I'll, 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 i'm not going to not make use of it i will make use of it and that's how i started showing it in my instagram post that see god I'm, you've not even given me i'm making use of it already god you've not given me i'm making use of it already please before I sleep, I would, I would always mutter, God help me, God help me, God help me. That's how I was able to fall asleep almost every time. At, as I December, I saved up for my post study. At the January, yes, January, I saved up for my post study. And what was left was that I should start paying my 4K debt. But by the time this issue started, late January, I did work for like two weeks. So I was like, I was just like, is it two or three weeks? I was just like, you know what? Let me just. I don't even know what I was. I was just there. But I was just like, that my post study money, I cannot touch it. I don't want to touch it. For whatever reason, I'm not touching it. Because at the end of the day, my plan Z was that I was going to apply for post study and see what they were going to do. Either they will consider that, oh, okay, oh, she felt she needs more time oh, and give me a shot. I don't know. I just said I will try all the possible options to stay. Because basically, I had read on the immigration laws. So I knew there were things I could do that would not make me an overstay within this particular amount of days. So it was just like, see immigration lawyer that's what you should be calling me now you guys i'm serious so as time went on i like 
I just, I'm not good. I'm, I'm like, how do I say this whole issue? The student union played an important role because I had to get in contact with them. Sha sha, from one meeting to another meeting to another meeting to another meeting, I was able to get connected with somebody that could actually be of help. So the day I had that my mental breakdown before I had my hair blue, I was having a meeting with this person and I couldn't stop crying. My head was just see after that call it wasn't very reassuring because he had said the same thing that you would see what he can do with applying for a cast and that i should also have extenuating circumstances i would have circumstances this thing with covid on my mind that that's the last option i said okay so after that call i just blanked out on what had happened that morning i could not remember it i just blanked out i started dying my hair blue i just started dying my hair blue like that I just blanked out like the memory just left my head because I have this type of memory that I kind of subside traumas that I go through so I just offed it like off my brain like that that time on I think that was like ending of February so I just booked from one meeting to another to another to another to another so from the moment that I, I think it's from around like, the time I maybe two weeks after I had my hair pop or three weeks after so since February 7 so to March 7 it was whoa meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting call after call trying to make a way trying to see if I could get here to try to see if I could get whoa the tier two no go easy oh it's not easy oh hmm. it's not easy if you know you want here to start planning from the beginning the moment you enter the UK because the closer you are to your end date, the more taxing is going to be. So your tier two doesn't have to be your field. Try to apply for a job that's going to that you shall know that will give you tier two, basically. So fast forward to the last two weeks, that is like between 21st of February to 7th of February. I bought chicken, wrap it in, prepare heat because I cannot kill myself at this point. I've been fasting and praying. I just needed to stay calm now and be positive. The last two weeks, the meetings I had, they were just telling me, calm down, I know it can be stressful, I know this, I know that. They were looking at my excuse, they were like, I had saw that, it was like they were just pushing me forward, like just pushing me. So February, March 2nd, I called again to say, what's up, what's the update? I didn't call them March 1st, I think March 1st, I don't know. I called them, okay, I didn't call them March 1st, I think that was the weekend, I think. I think, yeah. Um, I did shall call shall. so I called March 2nd that how far I bought that shall hold now what did they come out with the result they said I cannot tell till fourth so fourth I woke up first thing in the morning on my way to work I checked the the time this thing was going to come out I saw that it was going to come out like I, I saw that it had already come out so I checked it so that my odor is still there and then I, I waited till like 10 11 to call them that's why meeting was building and everything now so I called said I wanted an appointment blah 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 they said okay that they'll be able to schedule one for me Sha. they scheduled one at the end of the day I spoke to them all oh, this that that they said that all oh, that they've started considering me for a cast international student officer at Sheffield Alan University. As an international student myself, I've gone through a lot trying to um, trying to find balance between school and settling down and you know connecting with home. And I felt I feel like I can I can relate with a lot of struggles that each and every in, um, international student goes with, especially having to relate with the international relations, uh, the international experience team at Sheffield Alan University and I feel like I know that I can help you make your experience at the university a whole lot better if you trust me with your vote and vote for me in the upcoming student and um, student union <laughs> election. Thank you very much. He said they said they've started considering me for a cast because my final result is out. I said ah, okay well, that was good and I said okay this is what we'll do but it's just a consideration that if it comes fine if it doesn't come we still have the circumstances thing to rely on so i just i, I just started laughing i just started laughing like throughout the day i was just laughing throughout that weekend i was just laughing trying to create content that i can create and i was just laughing because what can i do i can only make myself again the day i've come the day i've been looking i've been waiting it has come so what else i just started laughing whenever my friends say have you sorted i said i never saw that more we're still there, there. 
March 7th. I just woke up like any normal morning. Look in the mirror, see. Hey, hey. March 7th, don't come, bro. Hey. Ha. So I waited. I called. They said uh, that they are still considering your cast. Okay. The, they booked a meeting with me. They said I should just just in case they accept the cast i they give me a cast i should start visa application so i opened the site started applying like started answering questions i could answer and then it got to where they said put in your cast i just off this the laptop that's how this mv sleep from nowhere started doing me that i should sleep an appointment is 4 30. sleep was doing me around three i said hey i told my friend my village people don't want to give up don't want to give up i didn't sleep i make sure i didn't sleep because so you know that's when you know your alarm that you normally would wake you up in a panic in a panic moment or whatever but i didn't sleep i made sure i didn't sleep so i went to school and then i was waiting at the waiting room and then he i just he came and he said that oh your cast just came in 10 minutes ago so make sure you start your assessment and even though you're not going to be 100 percent focused just make sure you're checking like um resources like maybe one a day or bringing out points or things like that just make sure you're doing what you want to because the course that even the lecture i was like most of you will not pass that's the course i actually passed well so it's a matter of please just calm down take your time do what you have to do what you need to do it do not procrastinate and if you feel like you need somebody to talk to please my dm is open my telegram group you can join my telegram group lost in the U U oh god you can join my telegram group lost in the uk the link is in the description box and you can send me a message on instagram but most likely join my group lost in the uk because it's not just me giving you my opinion but other international students as well they're there to help you and settle in to the uk so please just read your book yeah and it's okay to feel if you did i don't know if i recorded this before but just to say if i had come back to nigeria i would have to do the whole process all over again and not be eligible for a post study i can only tell you that you should be you should not give up fight for whatever if you know you're not in the room fight for it and make sure you do not do this on purpose don't try to fail on purpose because yo there's no probability that they are going to give you what you think they are going to give you so don't even try doing it at all and depending on just you sense that's all i'm saying don't do it at all and uh what else be selfish if you feel like you need to be if you're in a position whereby it's only you that is going to suffer it my dear focus on yourself and be selfish everybody else later if you people fight later later you said to i fought with a lot of my people and have said to now so it's a matter of just have your own back because in the future, now only if I've been an overstayer now, now only me go they run from the police. Now only me go they do this. Now only me. So please, I'm sorry I'm speaking pigeon, but please just make sure that you're doing the right thing. Study when you want to study. Start your assignment early. And then she's going to be to open my BRP. <laughs> that is blushing. That's sweet, sparkling. There's no laptop in this thing. There's no laptop in this thing. I want to do before and after of my laptop and you know revamp laptop revamp. My mommy will say charge it full first so the battery will not it still feels unnatural though. This laptop is small. I don't get 59 inches laptop. What's this for? Oh, changing. You want to change the ink. Hmm? Talk! Talk now! Ah!
international student officer at Sheffield Alam University. 